my most anticipated video games released in 2020 was a Metroidvania title called Carrion, in which you play as a tentacled flesh beast trying to murder your way to freedom and escape a scientific facility you're trapped inside. The problem was, I have a condition called aphantasia, which limits my ability to play this genre of video game without accessibility support. To simplify an explanation, aphantasia is a condition where a person lacks a visual imagination or memory. I cannot close my eyes and visually imagine an object that is being described to me, and I struggle to recall visual details of objects or people I've previously seen. This has knock-on effects such as making it difficult for me to mentally orient my position in space and remember where I am relative to other locations. This was a problem in Carrion because, among other issues, the game lacked even a basic map, making it difficult for me to keep track of my position within the game, and then to backtrack across the game's map when I unlocked new abilities, which could open access to prior progression routes that I had to remember where they were and how I got back to them. Over the past few years, there have been some video games that have done better than others at making this genre of video game more accessible when it comes to having aphantasia. Metroid Dread, for example, released in 2021, and featured an in-game map that marked paths that the player could not yet progress through, with colour coding, and changed those markings when a new power was unlocked to show where was now accessible without relying on remembering past locations and how to retrace your steps to return to them. However, the upcoming Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, due to release in early 2024, seems like it might be going above and beyond to be accessible for players who, like myself, struggle with visual memory. Now, before I dig into the specifics, I want to quickly say something that is important when I'm talking about Ubisoft. While I believe that Ubisoft, the game's publisher, does incredibly important work for furthering accessibility in the video game industry, it is also important to note that workers from across Ubisoft back in 2020 reported systemic harassment and abuse from executives at the company. Reportedly, 25% of staff across Ubisoft had experienced or witnessed harassment within the workplace, a figure that undoubtedly justifies calling the issue widespread. Workers repeatedly found that HR staff would protect the accused from consequences, and many reported that this did not change in the 12 months or so following this news coming to public attention. Workers groups such as A Better Ubisoft demanded that Ubisoft management commit to a small list of demands, such as ensuring that executives accused of harassment were not shielded, and that there be better transparency about the outcome of abuse investigations. None of those demands were met, and many workers at Ubisoft report little has changed in the time since then. The average Ubisoft worker has not done anything wrong, but I feel it important to acknowledge when praising the publisher's accessibility progress that many workers at the company do not feel properly protected from abuse by upper management. Some at specific studios report seeing improvement, but others feel the situation is still dire in their particular pocket of the company. That being said, let's get to talking about Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, which I believe is making some genuinely important strides forward for accessibility in exploration titles for players like myself with Aphantasia. So first of all, The Lost Crown will reportedly feature an optional setting called Guided Mode, which will mark objectives on your map alongside markers for currently blocked or open paths. This sounds very much in line with the solution seen in titles like Metroid Dread, and is a great sign for this game's level of accessibility for me as a player with Aphantasia. However, the more exciting new feature discussed is the Eye of the Wanderer, which allows players the option to take a screenshot at any time and pin it onto their map for later referencing. As someone with Aphantasia, I often struggle with puzzles based on visual memory. If I, for example, need to remember a series of visual glyphs carved into a wall, and then later type them into a console, I really struggle to recall that visual information. This new setting would, in theory, allow me to screenshot that information, pin it to my map, and reference it without having to go back and check what it was that I previously saw, referencing it at the location it needs inputting. This is incredibly useful, as it basically fixes one of my biggest issues playing these sorts of games as a person with aphantasia. While some game consoles offer screenshot functionality on a system level, often checking those screenshots means leaving the game, navigating to find the screenshot folder, then remembering that information you've just seen in the screenshot as you navigate back to the game, being able to keep that information physically within the game for easy retrieval is a really nice idea that I hope works well in concept. 
In addition, I do want to give Ubisoft credit for detailing their accessibility plans for this game seven months before the game's release, within hours of the game's Summer Games Fest reveal, covering both accessibility settings, but also design choices made to ensure that the game is accessible by default where possible. This is incredibly rare and to be commended. Outside of the Access Ability Summer Showcase, this is one of the only examples during Summer Games Fest 2023 where a games developer was open about accessibility this close to a game's announcement and this far away from its planned launch. While I feel it's important not to forget that Ubisoft as a company hasn't properly addressed some of the concerns of its workers in the aftermath of those allegations levied in 2020, I think it's also important to still acknowledge the positive work being done at studios within Ubisoft to improve accessibility in video games. Ubisoft is consistently impressive in this regard, and The Lost Crown in particular is offering new settings that I wish more games in this genre would consider to help improve my ability to play these kinds of games.